Welcome. In this video, we'll continue configuring our GCBM project so that a simulation can be run without disturbances. With the spatial layers processed, the next step is to build the project input database. Go into sample underscore data underscore exercise backslash input underscore database and double click on run underscore recliner to GCBM underscore GUI dot BAT. A recliner to SQLite window will pop up displaying the configure project options. This is where the archive index database and the project input database to use for the simulation can be identified. As mentioned in the first training presentation, the archive index database contains all of the aspatial modeling parameters. To select the archive index database, click on the browse button next to the AIDB path box and browse to sample underscore data underscore exercise backslash input underscore database and select the archive underscore beta underscore install dot mdb file. The next step is to choose the output path. This is the SQLite database that we will be generating. Click on the browse button next to the path box and browse to sample underscore data underscore exercise backslash input underscore database and select the gcbm underscore input dot db file. We're just going to overwrite the existing one. Our automatic configuration tool expects the gcbm underscore input database. Just make sure to use the same name. Answer yes to replace it. Then click on the next button. The next step is to add our classifier. Again, this is what links the spatial inventory layer to our yield table. Click on the Add button. An Add Classifier window will pop up. In the Classifier Name box, enter LDSPP. Our classifier name will include a capital L and capital S. It's important that the classifier name we enter here matches exactly what we entered in the Tyler script. For the path, we're going to browse to our yield table. Click on the Browse button next to the path box and browse to sample underscore data underscore exercise backslash input underscore database and select the yield underscore curves dot csv file. Once that is selected, you should see the spreadsheet populate. The last thing we need to do is indicate which column belongs to our classifier. So, click the select button and click on any cell in column A. Then, click the OK button. We should see our new classifiers in the list. Click on the next button to configure the growth curves. Again, we're going to browse to our yield curves file. Click on the browse button next to the file box and browse to sample underscore data underscore exercise backslash input underscore database and select the yield underscore curves dot csv file. We should see the data populate. We need to map our classifier to the yield table again. The reason this seems like a bit of a redundant step is that our classifier values could be coming from a completely separate file. In this example, they just happen to all be coming from the yield underscore curves dot csv file. That's the reason why we have to do this sort of repeated mapping. Click on the select button, then click anywhere in column A. Next, we define our growth curve interval, which is the number of years between the volume increments and the growth curve data. If we pretend to be the person who prepared this data, we know that it's in 10 year increments, which is hinted at in the column names. That is 0, 10, 20, etc. So the growth curve interval box will just need to change from 5 to 10. Next, we need to identify which columns represent the volume increments. We can do that by selecting the dot 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 button. We're giving it the first column of the range here. Click anywhere in column C. We should see it update to 2. Then, we need to identify the last column of our volume increments. Just scroll all the way to the right. Click the dot 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 button and then click anywhere in column AG. If done correctly, you should see 2 and 32. Next, we need to scroll all the way back to the left again and we're going to indicate which column is our archive index database species. Click anywhere in column B. With the yield table configured, click on the next button. No disturbance events will occur in this first example simulation, so just skip past the configure transition rules window.
This will lead to the Configure Disturbance Categories window. This is a more advanced feature that won't be covered in this exercise. Now, you should be in the final Create Project window. The first thing you always want to do is save your configuration. It will save all the steps just completed in case something goes wrong or in case you realize that you need to change something later. And it also allows the command line version of the tool to be used to regenerate the database. Click on the Save Configuration button. A Save As window will pop up. Just make sure you're in sample underscore data underscore exercise backslash input underscore database and save over the JSON file displayed there. Click on the Yes button to replace. Now that the configuration is saved, click on the Load button just to make sure everything worked. If all goes well, you should see a full progress bar and the word finished displayed. This is where some users can run into an error due to a Microsoft Access database driver issue. Users typically have a 32 or 64 bit version of Access installed, or potentially no Access driver at all. In some cases, the user might need to rerun the 32 bit version of the tool, which is specified in this BAT file. The user can always change their platform to 64 bit if they need to. Once the database is created, we can proceed to click the Done button to close the tool. Next, we will need to configure the years that the simulation will start and end. This can be done in the run underscore all dot BAT file in sample underscore data underscore exercise. The original simulation was from 2010 to 2020. For this new one, we're going to run from 1990 to 2000, so let's edit the start year at line 5 and end year at line 6. Save and close the file. Finally, we can go ahead and try running our simulation. Double click on the run underscore all dot BAT file. The model is going to run through all the tools again from the beginning. First, it's going to tile the spatial layers. Then it's going to generate the input database using the configuration we saved and finally run the simulation. Displayed here is what the model looks like while it's running. Ideally, you should see a number of process pixels. As long as you see some process pixels and no errors displayed here, it's a good sign. Displayed here is our GCBM simulation finishing. The important thing to look out for is near the bottom, just above the start and finish time, the statistics of the whole landscape. Just make sure that it processed the pixels and there were no errors. Those are the main things to look for. And then, the script will run through the post-processing tools. In the next video, we'll demonstrate how to add fire disturbance layers to our GCBM project.